In this video, we're going to talk about differential calculus. We're going to cover a derivation from first principles and the power rule. So what are we talking about when we're talking about uh, the first principle? Uh, the first principle states that um, if you have some f of x, and the, the, then the derivation of f of x, which will be uh, denoted as f prime, is given by the limit as h tend to 0 of f x plus h minus f of x uh, divided by h. Uh, that's essentially what the first principle is saying. And then the power rule at the other hand is saying that if you have some f of x, then f prime will be given by n x n minus 1. Right. Um, so if you look at the left hand side, uh, there's a question there. So let's go through that question. Uh, just, you know, to see how we apply these rules. So 7.1 says, uh, given that f of x equals to 2x squared minus x, determine f prime x from first principles. So we already know that, uh, f prime of x from first principle uh, it says that this is just uh, the limit as h tends to 0 of f x plus h minus f of x um, divided by h. So we're going to have limit um, as h tend into 0 and then uh, we have f x plus h, right? So everywhere where there is an x, we're going to put x plus h. So if we go ahead and do that, you get 2. And then in place of x, you get x plus h. And then you square it because it's squared, right? And then minus, in place of x, you put x plus h again. And then you minus all of these by f of x. <coughs> f of x is just 2x squared minus x and then you divide everything by h so that's how you're gonna have it so this will be equals to lim as h turning to zero and then here we have that too and then now we have x plus h uh, squared x plus h squared will give you x squared plus 2xh plus h squared when you multiply in uh, when you have something like this it will always be this first number uh, squared and then this number x in this instance and then this h you multiply them and then you multiply them by 2 that's how you get 2xh and then h you square it that's how you get h squared um, and then you subtract uh, minus x and then you subtract um, minus h uh, because that's what we have right there on, on the substitution we did above. So now um, minus 2x squared minus x because we have a minus there, uh, 2x squared will become minus 2x squared and then minus x will become plus x and then we divide everything by h uh, which is close to the limit as h turning to zero and then now we're gonna uh, multiply uh, this expression here uh, by two right uh, that will give us two uh, x squared plus four x h plus two h squared uh, and then we have minus x there minus h minus 2x squared uh, plus x and then we divide everything by h uh, which is equal to the limit as h turning to zero uh, this 2x squared this one here is going to uh, get uh, subtracted by this 2x squared so it's going to fall off and then this x here this minus x we add in this x here so that's also going to fall off so essentially when you're using first principles 
and at this step everything that doesn't have an h falls off so uh, as a result we are going to have 4x h uh, plus 2h squared minus h divided by h so um the rule of thumb if uh, you get at this stage at uh, this stage and then you still have a term that doesn't have an h then you've done something wrong because on the previous uh, steps all the terms without an h uh, they fall off so uh, the next step after doing this you can see that h is turning to zero right and then you know fully well that we cannot divide by zero so what you do at this step you factor out h on the numerator then it will cancel out with the h on the denominator that's why it's essential to for all the terms without an h to fall off so you're gonna get uh, the limit as h tends into zero we have h which we're factoring out and then we have um, 4x plus 2h um, minus 1 right yeah then we divide by h and then this h and this h are gonna cancel out and now we're left with the limit as h tends to zero of 4x plus 2h minus 1 h is turning to zero so we basically going to have something like two multiplied by zero so as a result we're just going to get 4x uh, minus 1. Uh, if you use the power rule uh, we have f of x uh, equals to 2x squared uh, minus x right if you use the power rule you get 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 and then actually let's do it like this uh, you get 2 multiply uh, by 2x uh, 2 minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by x 1 minus 1 uh, this will give you 2 multiplied by 2 that will be 4x and then 2 minus 1 it gives you 1 and then uh, x to the power 0 any number to the power 0 is 1 right so you just get 1 which is exactly what we got here so every time when you use the first principle uh, you can always use the power rule just to see if your answer is right uh, but then basically uh, the first principle is not really it's not really difficult yeah it's just a matter of substitution and then you know that uh, wherever they say x you put x plus h and then you subtract with um, f of x and then uh, you have to make sure that all the terms that don't have an h uh, they fall off and then you uh, factor out h h and h will cancel and then you will have your answer and uh, nothing really complicated um so let's move ahead we have 7.2 7.2.1 it says uh determine uh dx of x plus one and uh, multiply by 3x minus 7. Um, okay, the first thing to do, we're going to uh, multiply out uh, these two brackets we have inside. So that will give us um, d of x, uh, x multiplied by 3x, that will be 3x squared. And then x multiplied by 7 minus 7x. 1 multiplied by 3x that will give us plus 3x and then 1 multiplied by minus 7 minus 7 right so we get dx and then um we still have 3x squared and then minus 7x plus 3x that will be minus 4x and then minus 7 and then um it doesn't say from first principle right so we're just going to use the power rule but then if um, it is said from first principle, I would still do it. Uh, that wouldn't, you know, uh, be out of the norm. Yeah. Uh, maybe when you're practicing, when you have a question, you should use the power rule and you use the first principle just to get used to using the first principle. Um, so the power rule. The power rule is saying that um, I'm just going to write a general formula of the power rule. If you have... Uh, f of x 
equals to x. Uh, actually, let me just let me write this as you have a uh, multiplied by um, okay, <laughs> you have x to the power n, then the derivative of f of x is gonna be n and uh, multiplied by x to the power n minus 1 right so essentially if you have x squared and uh, you're gonna get um 2x to the power of 1 if we have x cube you're gonna get uh 3x squared so if you have let's say 7x to the power of 4 uh, you're gonna get uh, 28 x to the power 3 that's how you do it you take the exponent you multiply the coefficient and you subtract one from the uh, exponent okay uh, let me get rid of this junk um, okay so to come back to our problem um, now we have a uh, 3x squared right if we have 3x squared uh, what we're going to have is um 3 multiplied by 2 will give you 6 and then you subtract 1 from the exponent so now you, we just have 1 here and uh, here we always have a 1 right so 1 multiplied by 4 that will just be 4 and then you subtract 1 there so you're going to have x to the power of 0 right um if you have a constant a constant just falls off because yeah there's no x um so there we have it and then after this uh, we can just solve that mess we have there so 6x to the power 1 will just be 6x and then um, and then x to the power 0 will just be 1 so you just have minus uh, 4 there so that's essentially uh, what this problem was requiring, requiring us to do uh, let's look at uh, 7.2 2.2 uh, says dy dx uh, the derivative of y with respect to x uh, if if y equals to uh, let me just try that down real quick um, okay uh, there we have it so every time you have a, a, a square root like that or any cube root whatever root you have and the first thing to do is to get rid of the root yeah so uh, step one will be uh, write it um, down in standard uh, format right in standard format uh, by standard format we mean uh, get rid of all the roots get rid of all the cube roots or whatsoever you have uh, get rid of uh, this kind of stuff when you have a constant being divided by x get rid of that make sure the x is multiplying the coefficient uh, so that's the first step and then step two is a uh, derivative yeah after step two you derivate because now you it's no longer that complicated and then step three uh, you take it back to uh, the 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 said form and all the rules uh all the actually on step three what you're essentially trying to do is you get rid of negative exponents yeah so you take it back to uh said form uh, and you know you essentially uh, make sure uh, there is no negative um, exponents um, so yeah this is um, the this is the three steps you should always take if it's complicated like this uh, this uh, roots and this uh, um, variables uh, dividing constants you write it in standard form uh, by standard form we mean this 
no uh, variable dividing a number and there's no rules and then you derivate after derivating you essentially take it back you get rid of the negative exponents uh, so you can pause the video and write down these three steps i'm assuming you did so now i'm just gonna erase them and uh, we're gonna carry on okay um so we have uh y equals to uh, so then we're getting rid of the square root right you know that if we have uh, this square root is the same or let's say let's put a here is the same and then we always have one here right um actually let's do like this let's put a and then let's put k so if you have this uh, this is essentially equals to a uh, k uh, divided by 2 so if you had a 9 here and then you have a to the power k that will give you um a that will give you a a um some technical issues that will give you a uh, to the power k divided by nine uh, so i hope you get the jingle but if you don't uh, you'll see how it works when we uh, move forward so um we've already okay let me write the formula here so i've said that if you have uh, a root of let, let me put a p here and then you have a to the power k then this will be equals to a uh, k uh, divided by p so our y in this instance will be equals to x uh, our k is 3 right and then our p is 2 so we're gonna divide by 2 and then minus uh, if you take in uh, the denominator and you multiply in it uh, to with the numerator uh, you put a negative sign on the exponent of the denominator so here we're gonna just gonna have minus 5 multiplied by the denominator and then you put a negative on the exponent of uh, the denominator and then here we're just gonna have plus 1 over 2 pi and then uh, now that we have it in standard form this is step one and then uh, step two we're then going to derivate right so when i have y equals to uh you take the power you multiply it to the coefficient this is going to be three divided by two x and then you multiply one from the exponent so you're going to have okay three divided by two minus by one is, is also equals to uh, 2 divided by 2, right? So because the uh, denominator of 3 divided by 2 is 2, I'm going to write 1 in terms of uh, 2, so to say. So here I'm going to have 2 divided by 2, so that I can minus these two numbers with is. I don't have a calculator with me. So yeah, uh, if we derivate this, um, we're going to have minus 1. Uh, multiply by minus 5 so it's going to give us plus 5x and then minus 1 minus 1 again this is a constant it's just going to fall off so we're going to have we're still on step 2 we're going to have x equals to 3 divided by 2x and then because now we have uh, the same the same denominator here we can take one denominator and then we subtract the uh, numerators right so we're going to get uh, 2 uh, which is dividing uh, 3 minus 2 3 minus 2 is 1 so we'll get our uh, food there and then this will be uh, plus uh, 5x minus 1 minus 1 that's minus 2 and then yeah voila uh, there we have it and uh, now step 3 uh, is taking it back we're getting rid of negative exponents right um, for 3 divided by 2x to the power 1 over 2 it's fine we don't have a negative exponent and uh, the only thing we can do is get rid of the power 1 over 2 we can just put a square root there so we're gonna have uh, y equals to uh, 3 divided by 2 uh, square root of x 
and then here because we have a negative exponent we're gonna take uh, x and its power to the denominator right so that it can become positive so we're gonna have plus 5 uh, divided by x squared yeah and then that's how you uh, you solve that problem uh let's move ahead uh there's two more equations so let me just yeah um there we go we have another equation it says um determine f of x uh, determine f prime x from first principle if it is given that f of x equals to x squared minus 5. okay these questions are very similar to the ones we just did so just to uh, bullet proof your learning you can pause the video and you can try do it do all of them yourself before you see me do them okay i'm assuming that <laughs> you did the equations so now i'm just gonna go ahead and do them so we have 8.1 um <coughs> they're saying that f of x um equals to x squared minus 5 and the equation says to us find f prime of x uh, f prime of x uh, we know that uh, this is given by lim from first principle f x plus h uh, minus f of x uh, divided by h so we're gonna have um, f prime of x equals to the limit as h tends to zero uh, and then we take the equation everywhere where there is x we put x plus h so we're going to have x plus h squared uh, minus 5 and then we subtract uh, the equation itself which is x squared uh, uh, minus 5 right and then we divide everything by by h um, f of x uh, f prime x equals to the limit as h uh, turning to zero x plus h squared will give you x squared plus 2xh plus h squared uh, minus 5 and then we minus x squared minus 5 x squared and uh, when you multiply it with the minus it will become minus x squared uh, uh, minus 5 when you multiply, multiply it with the minus it will become plus 5 and then we divide everything by h and then we have the limit as h tends into 0 um this x squared is going to disappear because we'll subtract this uh, minus x squared and then this minus 5 is going to disappear because we're going to plus this 5 right like i said previously when you when you when you what um where eventually what's going to happen all the terms that don't have a h are supposed to fall off if they're not falling off then there's something wrong we're doing so we're going to be left with 2x h uh, plus h squared uh, um, divided by h and then in this step uh, you factor out the h in the numerator you get h uh, 2x uh, plus h uh, divided by h h and h cancel out uh, you get uh, 2x uh, then that's how you do it uh, you can bulletproof this by using the power rule so by the power rule you are going to get uh, 2x 2 minus 1 minus 0 right and then this will just be 2x so the first principle works the power rule works if the question say use the first principle you can use it and then after that you use the power rule just to see that uh, that to convince yourself that what you did is right uh, let's move ahead uh, 8.2 8.2.1 uh, it says um, determine dy ds of uh, the first question says y equals to 3x uh, to the 3 plus 6x squared uh, minus x uh, uh plus x i'm sorry minus form so in this instance uh, dy uh, dx uh, that is the derivative the derivative of y with respect to x will give us um six uh actually let me do it slowly we're gonna have three multiplied by three x right uh, to the power three uh, minus one uh, that's the power rule and then we're gonna have plus 
multiply by 6 x 2 minus 1 uh, this is gonna fall off we're gonna get 0 so this is just gonna give you a 9 x squared plus 12 x and then um oh i left out a term there yeah uh, there is a there is a plus x and then there's a minus 4 so for the plus x we're going to get x uh, to the power 1 minus 1 um yeah there it is then uh, the four falls off right so for x to the power one minus one e you're just gonna get one e because any number to the power zero is one e so that's how you would derivate that and then let's move ahead uh 8.2.2 uh we have something that looks a bit scary but it's really not um y x uh, equals to oh actually minus y equals to 2x squared uh, minus 2x uh, so um what we're going to do here we're just going to try and make y the subject of the formula right so on the left hand side uh, if you factor out um y you get x minus 1 right which is equals to 2x squared uh, minus 2x and then y equals to you take you divide by x minus 1 you get 2x squared minus uh, 2x divided by x minus 1 but then if you pay attention you can also factor out x minus 1 on the uh, numerator right so if you do that uh, you get uh, x minus 1 uh, divided by x minus 1 then what do you need to multiply x minus 1 with uh, to get um, 2x squared minus 2x I think if you multiply by 2x that's what you get right so x minus 1 x minus 1 falls off and then you just get uh, y equals to 2x therefore dy dx of 2x uh, will give you uh, okay let's do it slowly 1 multiply by 2 x 1 minus 1 and uh, this is just going to give you 2 uh, multiplied by any number to the power 0 it's 1 so the answer is essentially just 2 um let's move ahead uh, to the more to the last but more complicated question um 7.1 it says uh, from first principle it is given that f of x blah 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 but let's find the derivative uh, i'm not gonna do that we've already <laughs> went through questions like that a thousand times so what i'm interested in in this question is 7.3 and 7.4 uh, because they are very uh, unique to all the others we've been doing okay so 7.3 here yeah um 7.3 yeah. 7.3.1 it says uh we are given that uh, y equals to a x squared plus a um then it says dy dx let's find dy dx uh, i've been very precise with how i'm reading uh dy divided by dx uh, because uh this a very fundamental meaning dy b divided by dx you read it as the derivative the derivative of y with respect to x so in this instance if you have y equals to ax squared plus a you take a as a constant you only respect x as the variable so what you're gonna get here is a multiplied by 2 right uh, x to the power 2 uh, minus 1 and then yeah the a is gonna fall off because we're respecting x so a is a constant so this is going to give us a 2a x to the power one and then that's it uh, that other one falls off so 7.3.2 it says dy divided by da so is the der derivative of y with respect to a so a is our variable of interest and then 
x is a constant is in this instance so what you're going to have uh, you're going to get a uh, we multiply by one here and then you have one minus one x squared you leave it as it is it's a constant we're not paying respect to x we pay in respect to a i think this is the trick of the equation that's why 7.3.1 has one mark and 7.3.2 has two marks so and then here we just uh, we have plus a right so plus a will be one multiplied by a to the power one minus one so what we're gonna get is uh, any number to the power zero it's one so we're just gonna get one uh, multiplied by x squared and then plus any number to the power zero is one so we're gonna get one so that will just give you x uh, squared uh, plus one that's what you get when you pay respect to x yeah let's look at um 7.4 it says that we have a qu equation uh, of a curve which is y equals to x plus 12 divided by x uh, which passes through a point a uh, point a of coordinates 2 and an unknown y of b <coughs> determine the equation of the line perpendicular um so line uh perpendicular right uh let's just write that down so that we don't forget to the tangent to the curve at a so uh, the first thing we have to do let's find the y coordinate of a so you're just gonna have y equals to 2 uh, plus 12 divided by 2 so this is just gonna give us 2 plus 6 which is 8 right so now a is 2 and 8 uh, the reason why i'm interested in finding the y coordinate of a is because a is the point of intersection of all of the curve the line perpendicular and the line parallel right yeah so that's why it's of interest to me um let's talk about um derivation when you derivate a curve uh, you find the gradient of the curve that's why if you determine if you derivate a position function you get a velocity function and then if you derivate a velocity function uh, you get an acceleration function right so to find uh, the gradient at uh, that point of intersection we have to derivate uh, this equation of the curve and then we sub in uh, the corresponding x so if we do that, uh, we have y equals to x uh, plus 12 divided by x. Step one, you write it in standard formation. This will be x, y equals to x uh, plus 12 x minus one. And then we derivate, we get um, this is gonna give you one uh, minus uh, 12 x minus 2 uh, if we substitute in uh, the 2 at that point of intersection uh, this gives us now uh, 1 minus 12 uh, 2 uh, to the minus 2 um, and then if i put that into my calculator uh, what i get is 1 minus 12 uh, 2 uh, to the power minus 2 i get uh, minus 2 so this minus 2 is the gradient of the parallel line uh, what we are supposed to find is the gradient of the perpendicular line we know that a uh, gradient of parallel multiplied by gradient of perpendicular is equal to minus 1 gradient of parallel is minus 2 gradient of perpendicular is unknown and then this is equals to minus one so gradient of i'm very sorry for that so gradient of perpendicular will be equals to minus one divided by minus two which is just going to give you one divided by two uh, so the equation of uh, the line perpendicular is equals to 
uh, y equals to 1 divided by 2x uh, plus c. And now all we have to do is to find the point, uh, to find c. We find c using point a because point a is the point of intersection of the curve, the line parallel, and the line perpendicular. Uh, we determine this to be 8. So if we start bidding, we get 8 equals to 1 over 2 x x is 2 um, plus c this is just gonna be 8 equals to 1 plus c uh, and therefore uh, this will give you c equals to 7 so the equation of the line therefore becomes 7 equals to 1 over 2 x uh, plus c uh, c is 7 i'm sorry so this is just gonna be 7 um and then that will be it for the equation uh thank you for watching the video uh please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye